Brock Purdy, the 49ers quarterback, missed Sunday's loss in Green Bay with a shoulder injury. He was able to do some throwing yesterday uh, in, a, in a side session. They don't practice today. The 49ers hope that he'll be able to practice when they start up their week tomorrow and play Sunday night in Buffalo. They MRI'd the shoulder. They didn't come up with anything concerning there, but it was sore, so they held him out. We'll see if he can go this week. And Cowboys quarterback Cooper Rush showed up on the injury report yesterday with a knee injury. The Cowboys, of course, play Thursday. Uh, it sounds like there's a decent chance he'll be able to go, but uh, the fact is that he is on the injury report with a knee issue, so we'll monitor that uh, today and tomorrow as well before uh, figuring out whether it's going to be him or it would be Trey Lance if Cooper Rush cannot go Thursday against the Giants. Yeah, I do want to point something out. Just being on the sideline for J.K. Dobbins' injury last night, mm. after he got hurt, he was able to run pretty significantly on the field. They, I, I think, Graz, you could be on to something, that they're being a little That's bit precautionary with yeah. him. He was able to move pretty well. It wasn't the type of thing where he was limping around, and uh, yeah. we'll keep an eye on it, but just wanted to add that context. All right, more from Graz throughout the show. Let's turn our attention to Week 13. Dolphins and Packers. Green Bay, three and a half point favorites in Lambeau. The game time temp, by the way, 28 degrees. More on that in just a moment and what Mike McDaniel thinks about it. But the Dolphins have pressured quarterbacks at the fifth highest rate this season. That's an area that Jordan Love has struggled with. When Jordan Love is pressured this season, he has thrown just two touchdowns, five interceptions, while completing 41% of his passes. His completion percentage ranks 29th in the NFL. and His interception percentage ranks 31st. Hawk, we saw Jordan Love finally have a turnover-free game on Sunday. How big is that heading into this matchup against the Dolphins? I mean, it's huge. It's, it's the big question mark around the Green Bay Packers heading into the back half of the season and into the playoff. When you play the really good teams or teams fighting for playoff contention, a turnover here, a turnover there literally can decide the game. And I think LaFleur has done a good job in the way that he's called plays to keep – Love and rhythm to keep his operation right, to get the ball out of his hands when necessary. I still want to see more from Love, though. There were still a couple of plays, a couple of unnecessary risks mm -hmm. that didn't seem calculated, like this play right here yeah. in the double coverage. That could have easily Woo. been a turnover, right? And I think the way LaFleur kind of strategizes when to take those shots, I need Love to play with that same kind of strategy, to know when and why he's taking the risks that he's taking and make sure the payoff is worth it. That, that's my thing with Love. I think he's got a challenge tomorrow night. The Dolphins' defense is just as hot as the Dolphins' offense. Yeah. And the way that Anthony Weaver, their defensive coordinator, is using their front and then some of those simulated pressures, number one, you better block Zach Sealer. In the run game, he is an absolute destructive force where he's just blowing up plays and allowing everybody to fly to the football. I think the second thing is if you single block him in pass protection, you better make sure that you can win that one-on-one -on -one matchup because he is hunting quarterbacks. Chop Robinson, their draft pick out of Penn State. You got to make sure that you have an athletic enough tackle. His bend is showing up from an offensive blocking perspective. And I'm telling you, these simulated pressures are a problem. Four defensive linemen by themselves. Two backers walked up. Okay, well, as an offense, I got a guy for a guy. What happens is two defensive linemen mm. drop. I got four offensive linemen blocking two. The back picks up a backer, but the safety comes free. And as a quarterback, wow. you're like, who the heck do I throw to? Who, who the heck do I throw the ball to? Since the bye week, look at the points that they've given up. 16. Now the Cardinals and Bills got hot in those two games, but then 15, 19, and 15. Five out of their last six games, excuse me, four out of their last six games, under 20 points. This is a defense right now that at, on the road, Tua, cold weather, can he get it done? I think the defense gives them a chance to hang in that game. Hawk, any concerns on Christian Watson, zero catches, uh, the big drop, the, big, drop, the yeah. big spot on Sunday where he dropped the ball? I'm not concerned. I'm not yeah. concerned. I mean, that, that was a big drop, obviously, and would have been a touchdown for the Packers. But that, I think that was his first drop of the year. I don't question what Christian Watson yeah. brings to the table for this Packers offense. And I think that – what they need to do is get him more involved. Mm. He didn't have as many opportunities as you would like, which is also probably the reason why Love feels the need to maybe force it in a double coverage to try to get him another look. I think what they use him for, they need to get him more involved and continue what they've done with Romeo Dobbs, who has yeah. run incredible routes all season. And even in this game, you saw it in the slants routes. You saw it in the choice routes over the middle of the field. I believe that they can do a better job of balancing it out between him and Watson because Watson is too big of a threat and too necessary for this offense for him to go like he did this, this past well, I think one of the things that makes this offense so unique is Dobbs is the kind of do-it-all guy. Yep. I, I really believe he can do most of the route tree. Mm -hmm. And then everyone has got like a very specific yet high-end role. 
Watson, go be like the deep cross Ooh, guy or their yep. vertical guy. Jaden Reed is their version of a Debo Samuel. Just get him the mm -hmm. touches. Wicks can win one on one. The tight ends win one on one. Heath can win one on one. So everyone's got a role underneath the Dobbs kind of do it all type of player. Yep, I agree. Man, I'm excited. Everybody kick their feet up, settle in for a little Thanksgiving football. That's going to be a lot of fun on Thursday. Before we move on, we usually save loss and translation sound for Wednesdays, you guys, but you got to hear this sound from Mike McDaniel on preparing to play at Lambeau. You know, um, I was just going to carry ice cubes in my pockets and throw them at players all week. Uh, you know, I, there, it's, I mean, it's nothing revolutionary. There's, uh, I'm, I'm not going um, to throw it out there for the world and, and uh, act like we've checked the box of we've got this answered. Yeah, I mean, he's saying that because the Dolphins have lost their last 11 games, including playoffs, in 40 degrees or lower. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's, that, would, that would be like a question if you asked him in production meeting, getting ready for a game. He would be like, th he would give you that answer. And you, then you wouldn't know how to respond. Yeah, like, <laughs> he'd be, uh, he'd be seriously, being real. silly, you'd be like, uh, I don't know what to say. And, and then he might pull out an ice cube and throw it at one it's of us. It's a real thing, though. They got to go get it done, to they his gotta point. They got to figure it out. They, gotta, they, at they least can't pretend that they have. It's a question that they have to answer. No doubt. And it's division win. That's, that's why this is huge. Number two is because, you know, the players are going to get a couple of days off. So they got family, friends in. It'd be nice to, you know, uh, to feel good about it when you when you're with everybody because um, it's just not real fun it's not real fun to be around uh, you know that's my wife she'll tell you like that's what she's praying for a win I mean big time because she knows that you know I'm a bear when we don't win so we all want it I'm curious if that was a little subtle shot at the <laughs> Chicago Bears like when you don't win you're a bear? Wow. That's oh, it. I don't, know if, I don't know if he made dang. that connection there. But this is obviously a big week for the Detroit Lions because this is Thanksgiving. We're used to watching the Lions on Thanksgiving. This is the opportunity for them to show the world how far they've actually come and that they are the dominant football team that we've seen all season long. They are a much better football team than the Chicago Bears. Do not take this team lightly. Put on full display what the Detroit Lions 2024 season is. To New York, where the Giants lost Sunday with Tommy DeVito at quarterback after releasing Daniel Jones. DeVito's banged up, but hopeful about playing Thursday in Dallas. Sore. You know, whole body's kind of sore. Um, first time playing in a while. Took a couple shots. You know, it's only not even 48 hours, so, you know, things are still kind of just settling in. Do you think they're going to plan Thursday? The plan is to play, yeah. Maybe just see how I feel tomorrow. Hopefully wake up feeling a little bit better after I get some more treatment today, so look forward to tomorrow. All right, we'll keep an eye on that as they play on Thanksgiving against the Cowboys. Graz, things have certainly gone sideways for the Giants. What can you tell us about the future of Brian Dable and Joe Shane? Well, ownership, uh, specifically John Mara, has been publicly supportive in saying he expects the two of them back. And, and Joe Shane's been out on the road scouting quarterbacks at these college games. And so they're proceeding as if the, these guys are going to be the ones to make the decision about the future at quarterback and, and to be there this offseason. I just think it's important to remember, if you would ask John Mara this time three years ago, would Joe Judge be back, he would have said yes. And, and it, things went badly enough from there on out that season that he was not. There are a lot of games left, uh, and I think it's very important that the Giants find their way to the end of this season feeling a lot better about things than they did in their postgame locker room Sunday uh, if those guys want to be back running the show next year. Let's go to Denver. The offense keeps rolling with a win over the Raiders on Sunday. Bo Nix is already tied for the second most games with multiple passing touchdowns and zero turnovers by a rookie in the Super Bowl era. He joins two players to win Offensive Rookie of the Year in Justin Herbert and C.J. Stroud and Hall of Famer in Dan Marino. Dan, what stands out on tape from Bo Nix and company? This is not a dink and dunk offense. Number one, he's throwing big ins to Cortland Sutton and seems as good as anybody in the league. The big in is their dagger concept. They run it a ton. Him and Sutton want to be the more formidable duos in football. That shallow cross, if that linebacker comes up, I'm throwing that big in to that big wide receiver. If he gets depth, I'm going to take the shallow cross. He cuts this ball loose as coverage gets lifted on a consistent basis to Cortland Sutton, knowing he's going to be in that vacated window. The trust that he has with Sutton to make sure that he's going to get to that 18 yards of depth, even on places like the double in. Him and Sutton on in routes is a big time connection that the NFL for the remainder of the season and defenses has to pay attention to. The second thing, he's throwing seams or balls to the seam to rookies phenomenally well. Troy Franklin, bottom of the screen, you're getting that seam down the middle, hash in between the numbers, and you're ripping that ball with those safeties. That ball comes out to a rookie 
big time. The one to Vele at the bottom is one of my favorite throws of the season. Four up top. One, two, three, four, six offensive linemen. Vele at the bottom has what we call a Dino route. Post, corner, post. Watch when he cuts his ball loose. This ball is coming from the 42 to the opposite 30. That ball is an absolute rocket launcher right on Devon Vele's face mask. Mm. I think that there's this narrative or belief that this is a dink and dunk offense. Don't get me wrong. They build in their completions, as any good offense should. This young man is throwing the ball downfield. And he, mm. when it comes to those ends and seams, he don't look like a rookie. That was my takeaway as well, is that how he's been throwing over the middle of the field, which takes years to develop, even for NFL quarterbacks, has been special. The way he's the navigating. the strength is a little bit more uh, surprising than anticipated. Yeah, but uh, even the placement, though, yeah. right? Like, when you think about the linebackers, the safeties, where he's putting that for those receivers and pass catchers yeah. to save them from big hits, that is something you see mostly out of veteran quarterbacks. Now, I think the combination of his style of play, because beyond that, everything you talked about, those receivers, you can tell by the way that they've played, they trust Bo Nix is going to make the play. Yes. They're staying alive. They're trusting the, his opportunity that even when it breaks down, he's getting outside the pocket. Yeah. He's making plays. And to your point about the screens, it's not dink and dunk. It's not running screens as an offensive crutch. It's running it as an opportunity Advantage, to get the yeah. ball in the hands of the receivers to take pressure off your quarterback, but also make sure your receivers are getting involved down the field and immediately after the snap. More like an extension of the run game. I think – the way that he's playing, I, it would be surprising if they weren't the seventh seed in the playoffs, if they didn't yeah. get in. I, I would be surprised if they didn't get in. He's playing so well.